Can I beat Borderlands the pre-sequel using only Claptrap's action skill? Here are the rules. The only way I can damage enemies is by using vaulthunter.exe. That means I can't shoot guns or melee, but if I get the Krieg action skill, then I can use that to melee, and if I get Fun Zerk, which shoots my guns for me, I can use guns for that. I started my adventure by... I don't have my action skill. Hmm. That's... that's probably not good. I can't damage any of the enemies, so how do I get to level 3 to unlock it? Well, if this were Borderlands 2, I could fast travel to one of the DLCs and get XP, which might work in this game too, if there were a fast travel station. So it seems like the only way to progress is to kill the enemies, which I can't. Well, I guess that's the end of the video. If you like it, don't forget to hold the fuck up. I'm not giving up that easy. I may not be able to kill the enemies or travel to the DLCs, but what if there's another way to get XP? Now, Zinke can't fight the enemies for me, but what he can do is call them mean names so they murder him and I can pretend to be the hero and get the XP for reviving him. Well, it didn't take very long to get to level 3 doing that. You guys should check out Zinke on Twitch, by the way. He does geared speedruns. He's a cool guy. With my action skill, I easily... Uh, okay, what the fuck even is Claptrap's action skill? Well, it's a lot of things. When you use his action skill, it'll randomly pick from a list of possible action skills, like turning invisible, summoning a shitty turret, summoning a shitty siren, summoning a shitty death trap, becoming great value Krieg, literally Salvador, or becoming a rubber ducky that reflects bullets. Well, regardless of which action skill I get, one thing remains the same. After my action skill runs out, the only thing I can do is hide and wait for it to come back contemplating my life decisions. What mistakes did I make that led me here? Playing this tedious game with an abysmal character? Forced to sit and watch as my life passes me by just waiting. Waiting until I'm actually able to play the game again, knowing it's only a matter of time until once again I'm hiding and waiting, wasting away in my little corner I found for myself as the game goes on. Life doesn't wait for me, and yet I have to wait to be able to live. This unremitting cycle of pause and resume could only be broken by total surrender, but I refuse to be bested by so little as mindless monotony. Oh, my action skill is back. Cool. Since the dawn of mankind, the question of purpose has arisen. Over the course of a not surprisingly long time, I killed a bunch of barely competent doll soldiers and made it to Jack, who is really lucky doll sent the B team for this mission because they could have killed him like a hundred times by now while I'm over here in the corner patiently waiting my turn to attack. Eventually I got Blightbot, which killed everything in the room. That one is clearly the best. Not that there was much competition. With Jack somehow still alive, we made it to the third major challenge of the run. Luckily, even though I turned Borderlands into a turn-based strategy game, Jack can actually deal... some damage. My action skill finally came back and I got Blightbot. Okay, scratch Blightbot off the list of good action skills. That list is now empty. Actually, Fun Zerk is really good, but I don't have guns right now because, uh, reasons. So that's not happening. Well, back to my corner, I guess. I got Fun Zerk, useless. Then Invisibility, even more useless. Then Fun Zerk again! Are you seeing a pattern here? The entire gameplay of this challenge is just me running in, hoping for a good action skill, being disappointed, then running away. And that doesn't change. That's how it goes for 100% of this run. What you're seeing right now is what you're going to see the whole time. You could stop watching this video now if you wanted because you already know everything that happens. It's this. It's this forever. I mean, what could possibly change? What could I do to make this different? And this isn't me setting up some kind of bait and switch where later in the video I reveal I actually did have something planned. There's something else I can do other than the exact same thing over and over again. No, I'm spoiling the rest of the video. It's this. You've seen it all. Anyway, the fire guy died and I went to the moon. Even though I don't need to breathe, this lady told me to get an Oz kit so I can double jump and slam and shit, just tempting me with another way I could damage enemies other than waiting for the RNG gods to decide I'm worthy of dealing damage if I weren't doing this godforsaken challenge. Hi deadlift. Bye deadlift. So despite the fact that Fun Zerk is clearly the best action skill I can get, it didn't even break through his shield. Not even close. So it's time to try something new. I changed nothing and tried again. Yeah, I still can't break through his shield. Fuck this. I need to level up, but it's so early in the game there are no farming locations. So I had to do... side quests. What have I been reduced to? I got to level 7 and got a cool sniper. Fun fact, did you know that even though Deadlift exclusively does shock damage, he isn't resistant to shock damage? Nice. 
That is by far the most difficult time I have ever had fighting Deadlift. I'd say that bodes well for the rest of this challenge. Now I have to face the most difficult task in the game. No, the series. Nothing can prepare me for what I have to do. The only thing I can do is pray. Holy shit. I take back what I said. Nothing can stop me. I made it to Moon Sanctuary and talked to a bunch of people I didn't want to talk to, only to go back to the moon and fight a bunch of people I didn't want to fight. I very slowly, as expected, killed a bunch of off-brand bandits and made it to a talking trash can that took off its lid as its ultimate move, which made it significantly easier to kill. But considering my killing ability is dependent on RNG and waiting, significantly easier to kill is still pretty fucking hard to kill. Luckily there's a spot where I don't get hit and I can just wait for my action skill to come back, so the fight just turned into waiting and hoping I get fun zone. I farmed the trash can up to level 11 because I hate myself, and I went somewhere probably to get something from someone to do something. Okay, I guess I could go into a little more detail than that. The something I needed to get was a robot, and the someone I needed to kill was... I don't... I don't know what this guy is, but either way, I easily... Oh dear god, he hurts! If you thought deadlift was bad, oh boy. Fran's dad has four turret things that constantly regenerate his shields. I have to destroy those before I can do any real damage, so basically, instead of needing to wait for RNG once or twice to kill him, I have to wait for RNG four times before I can start killing him. All while trying not to get blasted by his lasers that basically one-shot me. Even if I get Fun Zerk, he just kills me anyway. And yes, I'm underleveled, but where can I farm? Red Belly isn't giving much XP anymore, the bandits barely give any either. Well, eh, it was worth a shot. Well, maybe the problem isn't my level, it's my gear. Specifically my shield. The only real reason I can't kill him is because of the elemental damage over time from his fuck you laser. So if I can get an alkaline shield and an inflammable shield, I'll be immune to it. Why do I need both? Oh, well, it's because it's completely random whether the laser is corrosive or fire, and it could probably be shock too, because why the fuck not? Well, that did it, but I don't think I fully explained how bad the fight is. Even though I can kill him, I still have to wait for good RNG. Here's some sped up footage of fighting him. Now that I know I can kill him, it's time to kill him a bunch of times, for hours, and get up to level 18 because struggling is for losers who don't want to kill the same guy for 4 hours straight just to be underleveled again after like 2 missions. I went to a factory to make a robot army, killed a bunch of bandits, and fought... God damn it, level 18? I'm already underleveled? Whatever, she died. Intermission! It's time for a word from today's sponsor. I don't have one, I just needed a fucking break from this challenge. Intermission over! So you might be wondering what's changed since the start of the run. At the beginning, I had to hide and wait for everything to die. Well, now I have to wait more because they die less. Moving on. It's time to go back to Helios, but now I have a Moxie weapon. If you don't know how Moxie weapons work, basically while holding it, a percentage of all the damage I deal heals me. So back on Helios, Jack told me to come to his office, which was way more of a task than it should have been. Then he told me to save a bunch of scientists just so he could unsave them a few seconds later. Jack, what the fuck? Why did I... That, that took over an hour. I can barely kill things, Jack. What was the point of that mission? Oh, well, fuck this. It's gearless Sal time. Nope, that was worse. Back to this. After farming for XP again, which at this point is somehow both necessary and useless, I went to my favorite part of the game, the platforming section. That's what everyone was asking for, platforming in Borderlands. What a great level design, Randy. I got lucky with some fun zerks and managed to make it through this section. I gotta get past this force field by breaking some containers, which aren't enemies, so I'm, I'm just gonna shoot them. Fun fact, even though Moxie says you have to shoot the blue, it doesn't matter what you shoot, so I just started blasting. With the wall disabled, it's time to fight Zarpodon. Oh. Wow, she hurts. Okay, so unlike the other boss fights where I would just run in a circle hoping for fun zerk, in this fight it's a little bit more interesting. I just die instead. Oh, and additional fun. 
Every time you die against Zarpodon, you respawn before this little electric thing. So not only do I have to wait for the respawn animation, I also have to wait for this electrical field to go away. I absolutely love hitting pause on boss fights. I've done this kind of thing enough times to know what I have to do. All I have to do is find a spot in the arena where I won't get hit. Easy. I found it. This is the epitome of this challenge. The ultimate waiting game. She can't hit me, I can barely hit her, the glorious battle that ensued required a culmination of all of the knowledge and skill I've acquired since the day I was born. Because when I was born, all I could do was sit there while someone else did all the work. In this case, Jack is my mother and Zarpadon's death is my sustenance. Oh yeah, there's two phases to this fight. So time to hide and wait again. And then this happened. Wait, what? I'm not done with her yet. What? Doesn't matter what happens today. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? Yeah, I gotta be honest, I still have no idea what happened. Oh, dude, I know exactly what happened here. What? Gas mask, what the fuck are you doing here? No, I got I got this. So if you pay attention here, Zarpadon was running at you right before you ducked for cover. How the fuck did you get in here? Based on her distance from you, I'm willing to bet she did her jumping attack to close the distance. And she quite literally went over your head and fell into space. How did you figure that out? You can't see any of that in the clip. In other words, she put the stinky on herself. Okay, that's enough. It's time for you to go. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Okay, there's no way that's actually what it- Oh my god, he was right. How did he- Hey, did you drink my fucking Red Bulls? Don't worry, I threw them away for you. What? Man, fuck that little gas mask guy who makes really good Borderlands challenge content. Am I right, guys? So yeah, I guess even the game got bored of waiting and just gave up. And that's how you beat the pre-sequel with only Claptrap's action skill. Patron shoutouts. I'm running out of ways to say special, so I'm using a thesaurus. Uh, particularly exceptionally special thanks to Chody, who was once buried alive for over an hour without dying. Probably because only their hand was buried. Oh dear god, they're multiplying. Thank you, Craig's Cottage, who also pledged the $69 tier. Uh, Craig has a really nice bag. Etsy.com slash shop slash Craig's Cottage. Extra special thanks to Shedder Dude, who was the first public speaker. Everyone else did their public speaking in private before he came along. U.S. Navy Squid, who never has to knock. They just walk right in and promptly get arrested for trespassing. Mick Baconator, who has never gotten the flu. It fears him, as it should. Little XHMX, who once stole over one million dollars from a movie theater when they forgot to pay for their medium popcorn. Special thanks to Tarkus Lives, who once built a fort out of the free cheese samples at the grocery store. It was eaten by Flig Mode, who can count liquids. How many in a gallon? Seven. The infamous potato, who we can all thank for keeping the queen alive. What? Oh. Dwarvo, who once yelled for the Avengers to assemble and no one showed up. Professor Sequoia, who can divide by zero, but the consequences are too great to ever try. Wabaki, who has a really big snake. It's a Burmese python. Theo Watson, who never has to drink coffee to feel awake in the morning because cocaine is way more effective. Rhododendron, who is the fastest reader on the planet, clocking in at at least 200 words an hour. And Warlord, who has 10 fingers and doesn't plan on losing them anytime soon.